diesel locomotive is cautiously maneuvered in front of the carriages. The idea of the cream and dark brown colored Pullman carriages originated in America. These hotels on wheels had a special feature that the seats could be converted to beds. His very first one was in 1883, and uh, it, that was from Paris through to Istanbul, but of course it was called Constantinople then. And that was organized by somebody called George Nagelmackers. It was the very first luxury train that there had been in the world. There are two trains. We have this lovely uh, Pullman train here, uh, which was uh, originally part of the Golden Arrow. And uh, there's another train on the continent, uh, which is the Wagon Lee cars. Well, it was very sad, really. Um, uh, the train uh, gradually became less popular, and air travel took over, and it became uneconomic. In 1977, the Express made its last journey, but not for long. The Orient Express got a new lease on life. We gradually found the cars all over Europe, and some in England. And uh, then uh, we found centers for restoration, uh, and it's where they'd done exper the experience. They'd done work of that kind before. And it took a long, long time. We started in 77 and didn't get it onto the rails until 82. And people were very excited and felt it was a very romantic project. A romantic project indeed, but especially costly too. The train fanatic and wealthy American James Sherwood put millions into the restoration of the train. The result is evident. The super deluxe Orient Express now makes weekly journeys to Venice. Part of the journey goes across the channel to Paris. The Orient Express travels only briefly through the English landscape. The Pullman carriages, in which kings and queens once traveled, are beautifully restored. They radiate pure luxury and have typical English names like Lucille, Audrey, and Vera. After a short journey, the train arrives at Folkestone on the English coast. It is low tide when we arrive, and in the harbor, the boats lie on dry land. Harbor Station is the terminal for the train, but not for the passengers. They board the Hoverspeed Sea Cat. Naturally, the baggage is transferred by personnel. In early days, the sea trip was quite an undertaking that lasted hours. Present-day clients of the Orient Express are ferried across the channel in a very short time. At the moment, we're running at 36 knots, which is close to 60 kilometers per hour. Our crossing, um, about 40 minutes between the harbors, and total crossing time, less than one hour. It is possible that the future Orient Express will make use of the Channel Tunnel deep under the seabed. Channel Tunnel will be uh, very interesting. I think it will um, be very useful for traffic running through between the cities. But I think there will always be a lot of interest in people who wish to travel across the Channel by sea. Um, I think it's a far more exciting uh, way of traveling rather than uh, traveling underground in a box with no windows. The Hoverspeed Sea Cat arrives in the French port of Boulogne. The new carriages stand ready. They are original wagon lee carriages from 1919 and have been restored completely. The train personnel is ready with white gloves to transfer the luggage. The Orient Express continues its journey.